today. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I'm gonna teach you how to tie my favorite smallmouth bass fly. That was pretty sick, dude. white version super simple guide style fly it is one two three four materials and a hook and two different types of thread so um, pretty easy to tie pretty simple here's the stuff you need to tie this fly it's got a rabbit zonker tail we have the the holo polar chenille silver gold right there right there probably right there we've got chartreuse silly legs because no smallmouth fly is really complete without some legs and then for the head we're going to be using white deer hair belly hair to be specific and then for the body i've got some ultra olive thread in 210 uh, strong stuff for the body and then for the head we'll be spinning the deer hair with gsp and this is chartreuse. It really doesn't matter. You shouldn't be able to see these thread wraps. So the color does not matter. For spring and fall, probably going with a size one, B10S. And for summer, probably fishing mostly a two. Uh, just downsize during the summer. Smallmouth are gonna, when it's really hot, they're not gonna wanna eat a big meal. So you gotta start throwing small stuff. So we are gonna tie size one. All right, you're just gonna go about halfway back on the fly and start this thread base. You don't wanna start it too far forward because you kinda wanna leave the first half of the shank clear so that you can put the deer hair head on it at the end. Get back to right where your thread ends at about the, uh, the bar of the hook. And then, First, we are going to tie on our chenille. And the reason that I like this fly is there's no weight to the fly. So you can fish it at any depth you want. All you gotta do is change your sink rate. That is another thing about this fly is like, if you don't have an intermediate line at least then you're gonna have to tie this fly with like some lead eyes or something so that it'll get down otherwise it'll just fish like a popper but if you got different fly lines with different sink rates then this fly is awesome because you can fish it at any depth and that's what we did uh, so this is the one fly that I chose when I fished the smallmouth shootout uh, one fly tournament um, this is the fly that my partner and I fished the whole day and the reason that we chose this fly is because I knew that all we had to do was change our fly line and we can fish this fly at the bottom of the river or we can fish it all the way like a popper on top if that's where they're eating. So like for smallmouth, you really want to meet them where they're feeding. So if they're feeding on the bottom, you got to get that fly down. And if they're feeding up high, you want to stay up high. So with this fly, you can fish it all day start up high in the water column in the morning, go to your intermediate line, fish it just below the surface, get some really good eats when you're fishing it that way, as these smallmouth will come up and it's, you know, it's one or two inches below the surface, so you can see this fly, the smallmouth will come up and absolutely hammer it, and it's awesome. And then if they're not coming up for it, you know, you keep dropping that sink rate and get deeper and deeper and deeper, and you can fish it, we fish it on uh, eight inch per second line, where we're basically just dragging it along the bottom and we got, eats and the riffles and stuff when we were fishing that tournament in, uh, in June. So keep that in mind. If you're going to tie this fly, make sure you got a sink tip of some kind or you feel comfortable tying deer hair around lead eyes. So this happens to be the perfect length, but we really just want this thing to be like, yeah, about a, a shank and a half of what we got here because half of it is going to stay on the shank like this and the other half, which would be about a shank's length will be coming off the back. And this tail gives a nice wiggle in the water. Um, if, you, if you tie it up and you watch this thing swim, I mean, you're gonna be like, yeah, I can see why they eat it. All right, once you got that rabbit zonker locked in, 
Go ahead and make your wraps all the way up. And then I like to lock it off here so I can really use this rotary vise to its full potential. And then we just pop this chenille. We're just gonna start wrapping that. So this stuff is super long. You can trim it at the end. Especially if you're doing the size two hook or smaller. Like you're definitely gonna wanna trim this stuff. Size one is about right. Like I tend to just leave it. Long, flashy, underbelly. Wet your fingers, kinda get these fibers going down because they need to come down and out from the bottom of the fly. I mean, this is what the fish is gonna see, right? Because they're looking up at this fly most of the time. And we're gonna pull that rabbit's anchor up. So this fly is inspired by Alex, uh, what's his name, A-Rex hooks. He ties a SID. His SID is tied on a 60 degree angle hook, I think. I just, I didn't have one of those hooks whenever I was trying to learn how to tie deer hair. Still haven't bought any. So I just tied it on a straight B10S. And I wanted something that I could learn how to tie deer hair, but was actually a fly that I could fish. And I just wasn't like tying deer hair on an empty hook and then cutting it off and retying it and just wasting materials when you can tie something super simple like this that you can actually fish and you can progress at spinning deer hair. So if I was gonna tie a bunch of these at once, what I would do is I would tie the tails. I would tie all of the tails first and knock a bunch of tails out and then come back with the GSP thread and then spin a bunch of hair, uh, a bunch of heads for these flies. And then after I spin all the heads, come back and then trim them all at the same time. That way you can cut down on the time it takes to tie each one of these flies. Um, so just a tip, but if you're spinning a bunch of deer hair heads, like if you tie 10 tails and spin 10 deer hair heads, your 10th one is going to be dramatically better than your first one. So if you want to practice learning how to spin deer hair, this is a good fly to do it with. And it catches fish, I came to find out. All right, now we're going to put our legs in. So I get two legs, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have half of them come out on the right side and half on the left side, like that. So I'll tie them in the tie them in on the right side first. Because that's the side we're looking at. We're done with the with the tail. That's it. Super simple. If you sat down and tied a bunch of these. You could tie them. You could tie a lot of them very fast. So I'm just gonna trim these legs to about the length of the rabbit's on her tail. All right, whip finish in here. This this fly too, like you might be like, ah, uh, well if it's a summer smallmouth fly, it only catches small fish. It does not. We caught a 16 and a half inch fish during the smallmouth shootout. On this fly, I've caught an 18 inch fish on this fly in the middle of summer. I've even caught big rainbow trout on this fly. Uh, so it just, it catches fish really all species. All right, now it's time to switch over to the GSP. We are going to spin the deer hair head. And uh, might be a little rusty at this because I haven't done it in a while. Okay, first we gotta do the collar. So for the collar, you don't need a ton of hair. I do about half of what I normally do. Uh, that much. It's a little bit less than the, you know, the traditional pencil that everybody likes to call them. Gotta clean it out. Get rid of the shorter fibers, get rid of the under fur. I should have my comb, but I don't have it. Measure that out. I'm just gonna trim a little bit off. Give it a couple loose wraps and then pull up, pinch it, pull it up, and then 
pull your thread straight down and nice and tight. Brush these fibers back because we're gonna go pull them back, go right in front of that, a couple wraps, lock it in. Just like that. Alright, there's a collar. I'm not a very good fly tire, but I can tie some flies that catch fish, so that's what that's all that matters, right? Alright, next stack, a little bit bigger. This one I need my comb for. Alright, brush out that under fur. Pack it, stack it, whatever. Try to level it out. I don't have deer hair stacker, so I just don't do it by hand. Doesn't really matter. Alright, so. Now we're gonna take this the edge with the like end of the hair fibers and we're just going to execute them. So you now okay, I'm gonna sound this crazy. Spin the thread, get ready to stack. Alright now, a couple loose wraps. Alright, so get a little bit of tension, that way you can take your hand off. Now, push down with your thumb, pull that thread tight. And then, see that deer hair flare? Nah, we're getting a little bit of a spin. I didn't really want to spin it. Usually, I told you I was a little rusty, but usually, when you push it down like that and you lock it in, it should just flare around the hook and stay there. But we got a little bit of a spin on that one. But it's okay. Let's try again on the next one. So I'm gonna pack that back in there and then slowly walk the thread up, just wiggle it kind of through these fibers and try to not trap any fibers. All right, couple wraps. Just make sure we got that locked in. Yeah, looks good. Alright. Uno mas. And you could do, like, I've never done it, but I've thought about using, like, red deer hair here on the end, just to give it, like, that little bit of bloody, dying bait fish look. You know what? Let's do it. Hold on. That's the thing about this fly. You just... Do whatever you want. It's a SID, but it's my version of a SID, and it's your version of a SID, so you can make it however you want. That's the fun in fly time. finish this head it's like uh, so I use whatever this tool is I don't know fits over the eye of the hook well that doesn't fit over it but I just wrap there pull that back tight I just do this a bunch of times do it a couple times pull it tight a couple more times Call it good. Okay, now, razor, you're going to spin that thread out. Now it's time to shave the head. Make sure you get your vise straight up and down. We're gonna shave the bottom of this head flat. Head. I'm 
you're going up. You can always trim off more. Really freaking hard to put it back on. So less is more. Slowly. But surely. I like to pull everything back. So you're not trimming off the collar. You're just trimming the head. Also, for this fly, like the head, it's really not. You can do whatever you want with the head. You can make it a wedge head, it's what I tend to do. Make darts. But it's really not the head that is triggering the eat in this fly. So you can. I mean, you could tie any kind of head you want. If you wanted to use Senyo's laser dub and make a head out of that, you could. All you need, really, is the tail. And the wiggliness of that rabbit's onker. That's the most important part. The head is just for fun. So that's the thing, like you could, you know, if all you got is a floating line, Take this body, put a cone head on the front, and Palmer uh, Grizzly half hole behind the cone head. And there you go. You got pretty much the same fly. Super simple. Still gonna get the wiggly action. Probably get some jigging action if you got a cone head. Whereas this is more of a swimming fly. There you go. I think that's good. Kind of like the redhead. Might have to do that more often. So, if I had to choose one fly to fish all summer long, yeah, I'd fish it all summer long. If I had to choose one fly, that's the fly. It's versatile, moves good, gets eaten, easy to tie. That's, I, I don't like tying flies, I'm not that good at it, so when I tie flies, I want it to be quick, easy, and effective, and this one checks all the boxes. Tie it up in different colors, like I said, got this, this one's been chewed on, but uh, this olive head, chartreuse tail, like uh, kind of copper, green underbelly, same green rubber legs, it, I mean, this one got eight pretty good the other day on the elk. It looks like, if you look up a, a banded darter, this is kind of what this color scheme goes for, is that banded darter. That's what, I think these, these flies kind of mimic a sculpin in the water. So, I mean, tie it in black, tie it in natural colors like browns and tans, white, the chartreuse, it can't go wrong. Catch this fish, just tie in different colors. It's the only fly you need. Then when you get into fall, Winter, you want to throw something bigger, I don't know, tie double deceiver. And uh, those two flies, pretty much, I mean, obviously buy some poppers, tie some poppers, whatever. You want to fish poppers, they're fun. But really the only two streamers you need. This one, double deceiver, different colors, good to go. Peace out.